everybody and welcome back hi friends time to get back into our book we are reading the amazing days of abby hayes this is the eighth book called the more the merrier written by ann mazer and published by Doo -doo -doo -doo, scholastic we are reading chapter 12 and the quote here is from the hourglass calendar and then it takes place friday after school it says time works wonders time works wonders all right I wish it did. I'd love to have time work wonders. It would be great if time shopped for my party, made the food, put up the decorations, and chose the music. How can I get time to do that? I need someone to work wonders. I've been so busy thinking about my room that I haven't even thought about my party. The party is tomorrow. 51. 51 kids are showing up. Everyone is coming, even Brianna and Victoria. We pause for a moment of silent screaming. <laughs> I'm not ready. I'm not even close to ready. What about food? What about tables? What about games? What about decorations and music? Time isn't helping at all. It's bringing me closer and closer to the party. Eva and Isabel were right. I should have prepared in advance. I should have accepted their help. Is it too late? Will they still help me? Abby slammed her journal shut, jumped up from her bed, and went to find her father. Dad, she called, running up the stairs to his home office. Are you there? He didn't answer. No one else was home. Her mother was still at work, and her twin sisters were probably still at school. Eva had the cross practice and Isabel the drama club. Alex was at his friend's house. Dad, Abby yelled, Dad, I'm here. Paul Hayes appeared at the bottom of the stairs. What's the matter, Abby? You sound desperate. I am. My party is tomorrow, Abby wailed. Nothing is ready except my room, she added. I should have done everything by now. Calm down, her father said. You're not in this alone. No one expects you to throw a party for the entire fifth grade by yourself. Your mother and I haven't forgotten that 51 hungry 10-year-olds will descend on the house tomorrow at 2 p.m. No way. Paul Hayes took a piece of paper out of his pocket. He unfolded it and began to read. 20 packages of hot dogs and rolls, 10 bags of chips, popcorn, three gallons of ice cream, a bucket of potato salad, six bottles of juice, five watermelons. He looked at Abby. That's the shopping list, all right? Abby nodded. Her father continued. We'll go shopping after dinner, and while we're at the supermarket, your mom will haul out the tables, the tent, bowls, and serving utensils. Your sisters are baking the cake. Together? Abby cried in dismay. Even the, quin the twins occasionally cooperate, Paul Hay says, though I admit I haven't seen it often. What if they start fighting and burn the cake? What if they forget to put in the baking powder? What if they use salt instead of sugar? If you're that worried, why don't you bake the cakes, her father suggested. You'll have to do it after shopping, decorating, and setting up the tables. Oh, Isabel and uh, Eva can bake them, Abby said quickly. I just hope they don't ruin everything. It'll turn out fine, her father reassured her. You can count on your sisters to bake two, two delicious cakes. Tasting is believing, Abby muttered. Her father put his hand on her shoulder. What do you have left to do? Just decorating, blowing up balloons, finding music, planning a few games, making sure everyone has a good time and cleaning up afterwards. You'll get through it, her father promised, and so will we. <laughs> Abby unloaded the groceries from the car. Did you and dad get everything? Her mother asked, pushing back a stray lock of hair from her face. She was pulling serving utensils out of a drawer. Yes, Abby said. Eggs, Isabel asked. Cream cheese, confectioner's sugar. Even I need them for the frostings. I think so, Abby said. She rummaged in one of the bags and pulled out a cartons of eggs and a package of sour of cream cheese. Here's some of it anyway. What are you making? I'm making a carrot cake with cream cheese frosting, Eva announced, pointing to the stainless steel bowl of batter. And Isabel is making a double chocolate cake with creamy vanilla frosting. Yum, Abby said. Can I lick the bowls? No way, Isabel said. Get out of here. Don't disrupt the chefs. Here, Abby. Eva pulled the batter into a large pan, then scraped the bowl with a spatula that she offered to her younger sister. You can taste this. 
don't, Isabel warned. You might get sick from the raw eggs. Abby hesitated. You don't want to be ill the night before your party, her mother agreed. Put that in the dishwasher, Eva. I licked it, Eva said. It's delicious. If you throw up all night and have a fever, don't expect any sympathy from me, Isabel said. I never expect any sympathy from you anyway, Eva retorted. She held out a spatula to Abby. Sure you don't want to taste? Abby shook her head. I, I don't think so. She put the packages of hot dogs in the refrigerator. The last thing she needed was food poisoning. Eva put the pan into the oven. Only one hour and the carrot cake will be ready, she announced. Hooray, Abby said. Isabel was emptying her bowl into another pan. This is going to be the best chocolate cake you've ever tasted, she promised Abby. Do you know what the secret is? What, Abby asked. Coconut? Orange flavorings? Cherries? Vinegar, Isabel announced. Vinegar? Abby cried. Are you crazy? Nope, Isabel said, sliding the pan into the oven and setting the timer. This cake will be delicious. Mom, she'll ruin my party, Abby cried. Do something. She'll ruin it, Eva agreed. Isabel ruins everything. Isabel stuck out her tongue at her twin. Olivia Hayes paused at the sink where she was filling ice cube trays with water. Stop it, Eva and Isabel. Stop tormenting your sister. Then she turned to Abby. It's a perfectly good recipe. I've made it many times myself. That cake is excellent. Are you sure? Abby asked anxiously. Vinegar cake sounded like a nightmare. She could already see her friends and classmates puckering up. Bleh. If it isn't, I'll get a cake from the bakery, her mom promised. Now let's set up the folding tables on the back porch. Alex ran into the kitchen in his pajamas. I want to help too. Can I bake a cake? They're already done, Eva said, affectionately ruffling his hair. They smell good, Alex said. Abby looked in one of the bags. Alex, do you want to blow up some balloons? She asked him. I'm going to tie them to the back porch and fence. Alex nodded his head. Yes. Here, Abby handed him a package of purple balloons. Be sure to tie them tight so the air won't leak out, she instructed him. I know, Alex said. Abby followed her mother to the back porch and together they began to set up the folding tables. We'll put the tablecloths on them tomorrow. We don't want them blowing away overnight, her mother said. No, Abby agreed. She already had a vinegar cake. She didn't need runaway tablecloths too. She looked up at the sky. It was filled with clouds. Another thing to worry about? What if the weather's bad, she asked. What if it's cold or pouring? Olivia Hayes shook her head. I'm rooting for blue skies. If we have 50 kids in the house, her voice trailed off. We could go down to the basement, Abby suggested. We could rent movies and play ping pong. The basement will hold 20 people maximum, her mother said. We'd have to divide the party, put half in the living room and half downstairs. And some in my room, Abby said. Her mom frowned. I don't want the entire fifth grade running wild in the house. We better keep our fingers crossed. Okay, Abby said. I'll keep my toes too. The smell of freshly baked cakes filled the house. Isabel and Eva were preparing frostings as the sheet cakes cooled on the countertops. My cream cheese frosting is a lot healthier than yours, Eva said, casting a critical eye on Eva's bowls. Yours is all sugar. Guess whose cake is going to be the most popular, Isabel retorted. Just don't tell anyone the ingredients, Eva said. No one will know, Isabel said, and everybody will want seconds. I hope so, Abby said, coming into the kitchen with Alex, who was still blowing up balloons. Don't worry, her father said. He was carrying bags of charcoal and a grill for the hot dogs. Abby looked around at the kitchen. The sink was filled with bowls. The table was stacked with party food and utensils. A few stray balloons lay on the floor and there were to-do lists on the refrigerator and dirty forks and spoons on the countertop. That's all anybody says. Don't worry, don't worry. Why should I stop worrying? The entire fifth grade is gonna be here tomorrow, Abby cried. She has a party panic. Isabel said, stirring the frosting with a spoon. Wait until you've thrown four or five parties in a row, Eva said. It'll get a lot easier. Her father set down the charcoal and grill by the back door. I told you, Abby, you're not alone. You've got plenty of people helping you. Alex knot a string on a purple balloon to tie the front door. Yeah, Abby, he agreed, like me. 
His father dusted off his arms. We'll give you much more help tomorrow. Abby took a deep breath. <sighs> You're right, Dad, she said, looking around her family. Thanks, everyone. Abby took a deep breath. Oh, oops, I just read that. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, we'll make you pay later, Eva joked. Yeah, wait until our next party, Isabel said. In her room, Abby lay back on her bed and gazed at her purple walls. She sighed with satisfaction, then reached for her journal and opened it up. Time didn't work wonders, but my family did. Hayes Family Wonder Workers. She put a list. So here are the Hayes Family Wonder Workers. Number one, dad bought food, set up the grill. We'll make hot dogs tomorrow. Number two, mom got out the folding tables, took out tablecloths, stacked paper plates, plastic silverware, napkins and cups on table, made extra ice cubes, got out serving utensils, juice pitchers and cutting boards, found crepe paper for decorations. Number three, Isabel baked a chocolate vinegar cake and frosted it. Number four, Eva baked a carrot cake and frosted it, wrote hooray it's summer on both cakes and purple icing. Number five, Alex blew up one package of purple balloons, <clears throat> tied balloon to front door so friends can find party. Number six, Abby thought of party, won arguments with parents, planned and printed invitations, painted room purple, went shopping with dad, put away food, helped mom carry out tables, drew stars, hearts, and squiggles on both cakes to decorate and blew up some balloons. Are we ready? Almost. Stay tuned for chapter 13.